really these jobs got me struggling less But I'm still under pressure and I've still been depressed There's no limit to extra if it makes you the best Fly in love with the winners, go take the air out my chest I ain't tripping so long, maybe it's for the better Cut the alcohol in the smoke, there's no limit to extra Ain't as far as it goes, a long way from your regular Degla A, make it rain on your umbrella Ella A, rain down Thanks for uh, tapping back in with the podcast. We're here, episode 13. Uh, as always, with my lovely second here, Miss Grace Sinofrio. Um, got a great show for you today uh, with uh, Matt, a.k.a. Jolly Legs. Um, one of my favorite people to talk to, just in general. Um, I wanted to have him on the podcast last season, uh, but I wanted to wait a little bit, so it wasn't just a parade of my friends. Uh, but now we can start to sprinkle some of them in. But um, yeah, it was great. Uh before we get started, though, we got a couple uh, weekly banner here, as always. Um, uh, you want to talk about the thing that we went to for my work? Yeah. So Kyle works for a church. Not going to say what. I do. But um, it's pretty cool. I mean, never would have really like pictured him doing that. But like, it's really neat and something that is definitely like different to get into. But yeah. Um, Anyways, um, so because the pastor has to be, what do you, what would you call yeah, that? Like so, brought into his um, position or? Yeah. So it's like, uh, you know, I'm not religious um, by trade, like I'm overtly agnostic actually. And I, I got a part of this church working, doing clerical stuff and, and, and assisting their pastor. Um, and it's one of the best jobs I've ever had, like truly. Um great people uh, you know they just you know the experiences i've had with religion in the past you know weren't the best so to see this and to see people that were truly uh loving of all people and stuff like that um forward thinking as well was great um the pastor that is there now um he started right as COVID started. So uh, in religion, when a pastor joins a church, it's like a marriage, basically a marriage between yeah. the pastor and the church. So they have like a religious ceremony and a, and a banquet and stuff like that. And that's what we went to. Um, we finally, after delays due to COVID, were able to have this banquet. Um, and it was great. I mean, it was a really great time. It was great for me because... <coughs> Sorry about that. I just choked. It was great for me because... Um, you okay? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess... Um, I put a lot of work into getting it set up, you know, I mean, there was a lot of other people that did a ton of other great things, but in terms of making sure people had tickets and things like that, um, so it was great to kind of see that come to fruition. Um, the pastor's a great guy, uh, very much so, not just a boss, but a mentor in some ways. Um, so it was great to see him uh, get his day, you know, in the sun and be celebrated and stuff. And um, it's also just good for the church to have like an actual like pastor and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it was really cool. Like the banquet was like super fancy black tie like they had a full band it was the church band but they were so good they were they had a dancer um they had people come up and speak about the pastor and um basically just give like a little party like an ode to him before the actual ceremony that they do on that sunday but um a really cool experience in general. Everybody was super nice and just really welcoming. And it was yeah. a bit hard, I think, with the masks and the music and right. everything. But it's definitely loud and people that I like kind of yeah. knew their names and faces that I've talked to on the phone but don't interface with every day because of COVID. Um, yeah. And I'll try to sprinkle in. I might have seen some already, but I'll try to sprinkle in some photos and videos. Uh, but it was a great time. And uh, it was really cool. Like Grace said, it was like i had to wear a suit which is was funny um getting that was a headache yeah <laughs> um like last minute shopping yeah, for last just minute shopping. for his and my stuff so, that was great um yeah it, a good time all around it was nice to do something too with everything going on in the world um mm -hmm. when i would give everyone an update on my chiropractic adjustments oh yeah so how do you feel uh yeah no so i think the last time we talked i'd only gotten it done one or two times this is now two weeks since then and yeah i definitely um it's crazy still like getting your neck snapped is you know uh, cracked is a weird process but uh yeah i know i definitely think it's helping to some degree i'm going twice a week uh, i probably need to get like some massage therapy and stuff done as well they said but you know i don't get the boku bucks for that um <laughs> maybe one day maybe over the summer i'll get like they say i need to get like the cupping thing where you get like the yeah yeah so um 
yeah maybe i'll try to do that but i i think it's great i think um i don't think it's a be all end all i think like it's definitely a good temporary relief thing you know combination of i'm sure actual relief and maybe some placebo as well but uh i need to go back my yeah. back hurts so bad Today's i did saturday as we're recording it and i'm going on monday and i'm very much looking forward to it yeah maybe i should yeah you want to tag along in. yeah <laughs> um it's great and the people and it's super quick like you literally go in boom they bring you to the back you're in there for maybe 20 minutes yeah because they give you like stem which is like the electric muscle stimulation thing as well complimentary at the end um so that takes a little bit of time, but usually it's five minutes, boom, boom, they come in, they know what they need to do to you, and it's great. So, shouts out to them. Maybe they could sponsor the podcast? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Probably not. Uh, my chiropractor. <laughs> yeah. Sponsor me. Sponsor me. Um, no, I'll give them free publicity all day long. They're really great people. Yeah. Um, couple things here, a couple housekeeping things as we uh, before we jump into our interview. I'm super excited for it. Um, I hate to be one of those guys that like teases something, but like n I definitely you gotta definitely gotta definitely take a look at our social media, um, specifically Instagram at 100 miles media. Um, we have a announcement on something that we're gonna probably be dropping not on this episode, but maybe the fourth or the fifth. This episode, uh, or I'm sorry, episode either 14 or 15. Um, I was something super excited. Um, we got a new series coming your way. Um, you might actually see that before the time you see this podcast, um, but that's not the only one. We have another series uh, that we had teased with Soul Fruit that is centered around food. And I'm really excited to bring someone to bring to everyone that should be coming this spring. Uh, and then uh, we also talked about it. Um, the last two episodes, we have an official website coming. This is just a way to kind of concisely organize everything and links to our YouTube and stuff like that um, as well. And also on that, there is um, some uh, merchandise as well that will be coming if that's something that you're into that we've worked really, really hard on to bring you some 100 miles merchandise. And a portion of all of that merchandise will be donated to charity as well, a Baltimore, a local Baltimore charity here. And we will give you some more information about that how you can get it what charity as well and that's something that we'll be updating weekly bi-weekly just uh sure like the charity statements and stuff like that because it's super important to us to uh put our money with our mouth put our money where our mouth is and if we say that we're gonna be for the community to really uh get back to it um so i'm super excited for that for everyone to see that um yeah there's, there should be something coming here soon and then also um we're just finalizing like our our uh guests for the season uh like i said we're bringing you 15 episodes and pretty much all of those roles have been filled but this is kind of like a call to action if there's any local artists that are more than interested to be on the podcast you can feel free to shoot us an email at 100xmiles at gmail.com we want to represent not just music, most of, a lot of the people that we've had on have been musicians, but in the past we've had on people that do phys physical medium art, uh, someone that's a chef, things like that. Um, so we want to make sure that we represent uh, everyone, whether uh, not only the different things that they do, different genders, um, race, uh, creed, religion, whatever it is, we want to make sure that there's um, representation for it here on this show. Um, yeah. Anything you have to add to that? No. <laughs> yeah so as always yeah feel free to reach out to us um we have 15 episodes coming to you this season and we have a couple spots open if anyone would like to be a part of that um yeah so this week we have uh matt aka jelly legs uh as he officially announced it here on the podcast he uh does music uh in the baltimore scene as well as uh, has some solo music coming um with a friend of his a friend of ours um coming and it was great i haven't seen him in a couple months just because of how crazy all of this has been um so it's great not only just to see him and we chat you know we teased that we've already done two podcasts before we even started hitting record because we had just chatted it up but it was great to really sit down and uh talk to him and if you're ready uh we can go ahead and jump into that yeah let's do it all right hope everyone enjoys we'll see you on the other side
All right, I think we've this is like what our third third try <laughs> at it right now. It's funny. I was like, out of all people, that will be the easiest. <laughs> we ran into the most technical difficulties, but we're here with uh, uh with Matt, aka the new name Jelly Legs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Too. Let's just hop right into that. Mm -hmm. I always I always like getting to know how people like came up with their moniker. So, what's Jelly Legs? So, um, it's kind of like a double entendre, is what people have been telling me. Um, I got it from skateboarding. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like if if you're out of it for a, a little while and you come back to it, you kind of get all like shaky. Yeah. Um. So you get jelly legs there. Got to get them skate legs back. Y under. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um. And then also, you know, when you're feeling like a little anxious or something, you know how your body kind of has like a physiological reaction to it, like your yes. your legs kind of shake. Yeah. So it's kind of like both of those are right. Right. Combination of the two. Mm -hmm. Mine's less interesting. It's literally just the generic like "Wool God" is from a song. Oh really? So, I thought it yeah. was from a uh, Minor Threat. No, it's from a uh, um, uh, the band Oceana. Gotcha. The song Cold Wool God, uh, and I just I don't know. I always thought it was hard to come uh, up with like a name, you know, or yeah. something like that. Like uh, it's always the worst thing. Yeah. But it's it's great to have you on. Yeah, thanks. For I was saying me. to you earlier that um, I wanted to have you on the first season, but I was afraid that if I had too many of like my close friends on, <laughs> that yeah. it would just be like this guy's having on his friend. <laughs> His friends only, <laughs> homies only. Right, not that the people that were on the first season aren't my friends, but mm -hmm. the you know the 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 OG homies. Um, so it's great to see you. We were saying it's been months. Yeah, since we September, each other. I think. The yeah, the show. We all went to that uh, Turnstile show. That was cool. Mm -hmm. Um, that was like the first thing that I really did. You know, I don't want to get too much into this craziness that's still happening I, in the world. But know, right? yeah, one of the few things that we were able to do, which was fun. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, and it was good. Like we've already done like two podcasts before. We've already turned on the camera, we're just okay. catching up and talking about stuff. Yeah, so good, good times. Yeah, uh, the one thing that I did want to talk to you about. Um, I mean, um, we have a multitude of things here, but um, you're a man that's very much involved in music, and I know that in the past that you've done stuff with bands, still do stuff with bands. Mm -hmm. We've been in a band together, but sideball we'll get into this later we've actually yeah. if you think about it been in two bands together can you think of what the second one is diminutive thunderclap is diminutive, yes. yes i'm so glad you knew that we'll oh, get yeah. into the we'll get into diminutive mm -hmm. thunderclap never forget for anyone that doesn't like, given the uh well, i mean obviously no one would know besides the four of us <laughs> but what is diminutive thunderclap um so in the eighth grade i believe yeah uh, this one rock band the uh og the, rock band mm -hmm, for uh xbox 360 we would uh, have every Friday and I th even sometimes Saturdays. So it was like yeah. a, a double feature weekend. Yeah, double. <laughs> we'd literally just lock in and play rock band all weekend. Um, the games that were played at your house were always <laughs> Left for Dead and Rock Band. Yeah, yep. Guitar Hero, some That's combination yeah. of that. <laughs> um, I remember it was one of the... Uh, like, you know, the random band generator name? Yeah. Yeah, yep. It was the first one. We were just like, that's it. You were like, that's yep. metal enough. That's <laughs> that, cool. That is our band name. Do you remember um, Girl Juice? Girl Juice. Oh, what was it? Um... I think it was like Blue Gatorade or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. We like needed to channel, channel yeah. our inner Dave Girl. So we made... the, like the hi hats on Everlong was like. Tch. Yeah. It's hard, and we man. needed to get some uh, Girl Juice going. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I think we need to maybe do a reunion of, of it here. Got to get the then. band back together. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing that uh, that I was thinking, though, is is you were mentioning to me as we were kind of getting together to do some of this podcast stuff is that you... um. You have a new release coming out, like a like a solo release or something that you've been working on, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's new for you because usually you, I know you've done stuff like in the band and bands in the past. You do stuff like with your main band right now. Mm -hmm. Like, what's that kind of been like to do something solo? And I know it's in collaboration, right, with uh, mm -hmm. with Jaberwalk, right? You yep. said, talk yep. to me about that. Like, how did that come to be, and kind of what's the difference for you, I guess, between mm -hmm. doing something in a band dynamic? Because you know, it's it's so interesting, like. I, I only know, like, the band dynamic, like, from my past. Like, what's that, like, right. kind of having something that's more, like, on your own? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, Jay, uh, Jay Berwak and I, we, um, we got together at my house once and recorded a couple of demos, mm -hmm. and then, um, we actually ended up scrapping them. And then, uh, so it's kind of like a virtual thing, because he's down in, um, South Carolina now. Yeah. Um, so... I'll write something, send it to him, he'll work on it, send it back, or something like that. So that's, that's been really fun. Yeah. Um... But I've always been, um, I like collaborating, so it's it's hard for me to like do all the things by myself. Sure. Um, you know, because it's it's more fun that way, anyways. Too. Yeah. Um, 
so you know being with a band you have you know people to bounce ideas off of versus when it's like me in in my house with my with my gear alone right that's what i'm saying i was like I, I feel like when you're in a band you can collaborate with like other people in your band mm-hmm. and i guess you can collaborate with like other artists but i feel like when you right. do something that's more just like a one man two man thing and it, it really opens up the door to like collaborate not like you since you have no other band members you right. have to collaborate yeah. with other people and that's cool and especially like someone mm-hmm. that you've known for so long does that make it easier less easy i mean i guess the yeah. virtual thing it makes it easier yeah it's someone that you still talk to you yeah it's really easy with jay um yeah we've been best friends since like seventh grade so um you know we could not talk for months and then pick up like nothing right. happened uh, right so when he sends me something i'll work on it we'll talk on the phone for like an hour figure something out so um, you do you just like export something and bounce it back between each other exactly and get it going? is yep. there any kind of a uh, time frame or anything on, on when we can expect to see something uh, so our first track is, um, I think, final touches are being put on it, yeah. and then I think we're shooting for um, either somewhere between four to six tracks for like a little EP or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, so we'll see where it goes from there. Oh, but yeah. um, definitely trying to look uh, at collaborating with any and everyone that's willing to. Um, I don't sing because right. no one wants to hear me <laughs> sing. Um, I'm kind of like cringing at the fact that I have to listen to my voice when I right. watch this video when it comes out. Um, you should see me editing <laughs> it. I basically do it with earplugs in. Or yeah. Something. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, if anyone's listening that wants to let me borrow their voices for uh, vocal tracks or hey. you know, any type of instrumentation, let me know. I'm there totally up for it. Get uh get with the uh, the jolly legs. Yep. Um, how about with uh I know like the main band that you play in is Modern Nomad, mm-hmm. right? You guys actually just played on the time that we're recording this on Wednesday, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. What's that been like? Um, continuing to do that and and to contribute to that, like uh, especially, I have always found it interesting. You know, again, not to say too much on like the COVID stuff, but coming out of that, right? Because that was probably like a big. Yeah time to just pause right especially Mm -hmm. like um with like obviously live shows and stuff like that so what's that been like coming out of that and i know you said like even since then like you guys have run into like some hiccups with covid and stuff like that but Mm -hmm. does it feel good to kind of hopefully see whatever this means some light at the end of the tunnel and get back to that right yeah it's been fun um yeah so i've been playing with uh tom for about 2015 so we're going on year seven in wow. april yeah um i think it's april 17th is our first our first gig um back in 2015 um so it's been great tom you know writes great songs very um inspiring to anyone in the baltimore scene that we've played with is uh definitely opened up yeah um, my eyes to the recording process and collaborative um endeavors and stuff like that um but it's been nice so it, when the pandemic first started we were talking about you know you know virtual shows yeah um but unfortunately, because there, there's five of us that play live, it's hard to, it was really hard back then. It was actually scary to try and get together. Um, right. But it, no yeah, all the technical music. stuff aside, just getting people in a room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Tom did some solo, um, like electronic, not electronic, uh, virtual gigs, mm-hmm. I guess, which were, which were good. Um, and then I think we've had, this is our second or third show back. That was on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, you know. You know, the fingers trend. crossed yeah, yeah yeah it'd be nice to get back to some kind of was that nice to get on get up on stage and just be like this is some form of normalcy i yeah. mean as the world now enters another <laughs> no. catastrophe yeah. um is you know is it like you know the meme that's like nature is healing or yeah or is it... <laughs> <laughs> right yeah it, it's been great um it was just it was nice to be up there um and mm-hmm. it, it, it felt very safe too um yeah so we, we play at the auto bar and they're very um, I use the word strict just to, you know, because no, strict is yeah. a good thing in this case, because yeah. public health, but um, they're very strict with the masks. So the only times that anyone's masks were off was when they were performing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just felt very safe the whole time, but it was very fun to just kind of let go and do something that I'm used to doing for the last five or so years. Um, right. Despite yeah, all the... Same for us. Like, uh, it's funny, we were, I was saying to you earlier that you guys had played on Wednesday, and then mm-hmm. my brother and Mike's yeah. band had played the next day at Auto Bar as well. You know, yep. Rocking the Shirt, Shouts Out, Lovers of Braille. And yeah, they d- did a great job. Like, I've gone to some stuff, uh, shows or just other things, like, since, like, the pandemic has started where, you know, I'm like, uh, like, you know, some people aren't doing a great job at following the rules, no. or the, you know, and but they, they did a great job and, and, and stuff like that. And it's cool to see where venues can now continue to do what they need to do to stay in business mm-hmm. and continue to protect people at the same time. Yeah. Which is good because we definitely need them. It's already hard enough to be a venue. Fuck, during all of this. It's, yeah. Right. Well, I can only imagine. I, right. Yeah, I really can't even imagine. Something that I was thinking that I've never thought about, but when I was 
trying to put together questions to think about you like i feel like you'll <laughs> you'll get what i'm trying to say when i say this but some yeah. people watching might be like what the what the hell are you <laughs> saying like yeah, no worries i know you're big and like this like the i mean music and this are like the two consistencies when i think of you that like uh, uh have always been there is like music and skating always right yeah. and yep. but you own that right it's you're like, like, the, it's like yeah. the core right. of my being i know sure. it's kind of it's been like a, a joke with our friend group but, right but those are like that, that's it <laughs> <laughs> i felt like we were younger like truly like stood underneath like there was like the crew of people that stood underneath the y stairs, the y -stairs yeah. and then the kind the ones that stood above mm -hmm. and it was always like you either like played in a band or skated <laughs> yeah. or like you know or some other like ragtag misfit <laughs> person you know um yeah no I, I always like that but uh like i said I, I had this idea that was like um because i don't really know a lot about skating besides just like from my friends and stuff like that like sure. is there uh and bear with me in this question do you think mm -hmm. that there's a lot of similarities between like the freedom and creativity of skating yeah as like doing music especially like music as a one-man kind of operation mm -hmm. does that I, make sense yeah, there, yeah i think there are definitely some parallels um in both you know music and skateboarding you're definitely challenging yourself um, yeah and trying to like really better yourself as a as an artist or as a as an I would tell you to say athlete but yeah not, yeah <laughs> dude hey it's in the olympics yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but um yeah just you just got to be creative come up with new ways to do things it's, it's uh you know mental mentally stimulating too Something's yeah it's tricky you gotta like you know you can always ask someone else for help or right. uh you know just attack it from a different angle literally mm -hmm. you know physically yeah. different angle or um you know metaphorically different angle you know getting a different perspective right i was thinking nice. too even just like uh like i don't know like seeing a spot i don't know if this makes sense to skate or something yeah. like that like there's something abstract in that and then like kind of like you know like writing a song or like trying to to land like a spot like just putting mm -hmm. in the reps and committing yeah. to it and stuff like that and Definitely. you know and obviously with skating there's like a different level of athleticism but like i think you'll get this like a someone that plays music as well there is like some level of not like physicality but like mental yeah. physical connection prowess that happens when like playing music yeah. you know so i was like huh i was kind of i was kind of patting myself on the back yeah. when i came up with that, it's good connection. that question yeah, just like uh you know people play different instruments different yeah. um you know specialties in the musical realm um you know, I've I have friends who are you know really technical or very uh, you know, I have people that will go you know thirty miles an hour and jump down a flight right. of stairs, or I have people that will you know do uh, you know trendy trendy tricks right. just on flat ground. Well, um, that's what I was thinking. There's like you know even genres of skating within skating, right? Like definitely. to like to like you know mom and dads, everybody's like Tony Hawk, right? Yeah. But you know, but <laughs> like uh, you know, but there's like you know street skating and bird skating. I mean, and then I'm sure like there's even more from that. That's just like from my general knowledge, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, stuff yeah. like that, right? So, huh, I didn't think <laughs> about that. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> I've seen the tweet that's like a. Uh, people like being like i feel like i just saw tony hawk at yeah. the airport yeah. you look like tony hawk he's like, yeah, <laughs> like yeah that's me <laughs> he's such a like random celebrity that i feel like yeah if i did see him i'd be like yeah hey yeah that's and, tony hawk yeah i feel like everyone knows him by now right ever since exactly. that episode of rocket power the Birdman, remember that one yes yeah so good he's just like one of those celebrities that's kind of just out there like everyone knows him they're like mm. yeah the skateboard yeah. guy all this kids shred too really like uh riley hawk's on uh I think he's on Baker, but just, he's just with like the the Thrashers, like he's just killing it. There's this kind of like a random sidebar, but while we're on the topic, I have to sh send it to you. It was like a video that I watched at like two o'clock in the morning the other night. It was called like How Rob Deerdeck finessed the skate world and MTV. <laughs> I love that word finesse. Yeah, yeah. like it's stuff like that, <laughs> and it was like. MTV basically now just only shows ridiculousness. Yeah. And it was showing, it was explaining like why that is a thing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He really did just, just take He just over. got that bag. Yeah. They should rename MTV to just like ridiculousness TV. Yeah. Or, you know? RTV. DTV. <laughs> yeah. DTV. Direct TV. I mean, I basically, I think that's like, that's kind of what the video goes into. They like, that's what he wanted it to be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to market and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. What a random. I want to go back and watch Robin Big. I was going to say rest rest in peace. Uh, yeah, Big Black. Rest Rest in peace. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, then, uh, back to the skating thing. That was, that was interesting. I didn't mm -hmm. think about the, the similarities. I, there was more to that uh, question than I thought. Yep. Um, and also, you know, we're talking about, you know, I'm really gassing this man up. He's a man <laughs> of many talents. Um, I won't get too into it just to protect, like, your... Um, 
like uh, privacy and stuff like that. But Thank you. like I know that you uh, work in um, teaching in special ed and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And that's yep. something that I think uh, if I know correctly is like something that's kind of like core to like your family. It's like you come from Definitely. teachers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. How did you get into that? Like into like I obviously like when we all are like growing up, like, you know, aspirations. But I feel like as long as I've known you, like that's always been an aspiration that you had and mm-hmm. and like you just hit the ground running with it and you've been working in that field um seven years seven years and you've mm-hmm. also like i always thought it was cool that you have done things outside of it to kind of help accommodate better like i know that like right. um i think you can read like braille and okay. stuff yeah. as well mm-hmm. and stuff like that yeah. uh i guess first off just yeah talk to us on how you got into mm-hmm. that and then i have some more questions from there yeah so um i know i guess in high school i kind of took a not the easy way up, but I definitely wasn't, you know, pushing myself as yeah. hard as I could. Um, and then once I got into college, um, I read a book. It was actually Ender's Game. If you ever seen the movie, yeah, the movie's not, you know, not the fact. But the <laughs> book is really cool. Um, there's actually like a whole like series, but it's really cool. Anyways, um, mm-hmm. I read that book and I was like, oh, it's like a pretty cool book. Um, and I never really got into reading. And then I started reading. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, like I, I think I'm like actually I might be kind of smart. Um, <laughs> You're like whoa. And, you know, and like growing up, you know, skateboarding, there's always that, you know. I don't want to say stereotype, but sure. you kind of have that preconceived notion that all all skateboarders are, you know, dumb, dirty, all right. that stuff, right? So I tried to kind of embrace that, you know, other side of me that yeah. wasn't neither. Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, I started reading and started getting into learning and, um, you know, my mom was a teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started visiting her classroom after, um, after my classes at the community college. Yeah. And um, I just loved it. The kids were so great, and it, just the connections you can make, yeah. and um, helping people learn is just—it's just, it's just a, it's such a cool concept. Do you feel like since you were like raised around it with like your mom mm-hmm. working in the field, and I know like even when we were in middle school, like sometimes you'd stay after school just to wait for her and stuff right. like that. So I'm sure you saw like flashes of of it in that. Mm-hmm. Like, do you feel like that that kind of I would assume gave you like kind of better insight onto the job because i'm sure definitely people have some idea of what it is right because we've all seen like inclusion helpers and things mm-hmm. like that in the classroom right um but um once you actually like get into it i'm sure people see it differently but you kind of had that peek behind the curtain ahead mm-hmm. of time do you feel like that kind of <laughs> tempered your expectations a little bit for what the yeah. job really was yeah i knew what i was getting into yeah um yeah t- yeah I mean, growing up when I was a kid, I obviously knew that teachers were people because, you know, family and education. Um, but I, I guess, you know, watching it firsthand, like they are, we teachers are people with like, you know, actual lives outside right. of school too. Right. Um, so I think also, I you know I kind of operate behind the mantra of like, be the person you needed when you were younger. I know. Yeah. I think we mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just trying to be the person that uh, I would have liked to know when I was a kid, you know, um, yeah. even growing up skateboarding, I didn't really have any super positive role models. Um, sure. So, you know, I do let the kids know that I, I skateboard and, you know, do music stuff. Yeah. Um, just to let them know that, you know, intelligence and right. You, know, you can do learning, do those things yeah. are not exclusive to one another. Right. I think that's a great point. Like you said, like that be the teacher that you wish you had like growing up, because mm-hmm. I think we've all have had the spectrum of definitely bad teachers, but I've, I've been fortunate enough and, and mm-hmm. uh, growing up to have some good teachers and stuff like that. And like, even if it's something just as simple as like, I don't dread walking into their classroom, right. you know, even something as simple as that can kind of just help you, be more open to learning or just that, being like, I definitely. don't, you're not going out with that mindset where it's like, oh, okay, I hate this. I don't want to be here. And, you yeah. know? Even just saying hi to some kids some days or, yeah. you know, remembering little things about them and like asking them about just letting them know that, you know, they exist beyond just a, one of your pupils. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. It just, it's really nice to have a connection with people in general, especially with everything that's going on now right. with the pandemic and all that. But, uh, it's been nice to yeah. just kind of be a support system for some some people it's nice too like i've had i've ran into like a handful of teachers like post like graduating and stuff like that um um, you know and i was never like you know i was just like a a kid in class i wasn't outgoing or anything like that you know so but it was nice to like have a teacher like um i don't know if you remember miss growl oh yeah she was like hey like i worked at a place in town and she was Mm -hmm. like hey you're kyle you know like she knew me and i was like oh you're like it's only been like three years, but right. like you've 
see hundreds of kids, you know, every year mm. and stuff like that. So it was nice. And she was an example of someone that I thought was a good teacher, you know what yeah. I mean? And, yep. and a great teacher. And, uh, yeah, I remember just being like, that's nice. Like that, you know, and I, it's funny, like, uh, I was like, all right, well, thank you, Miss Grau. And she was like, call me, whatever her first name yeah. was. And uh -huh. I was like, all right, Miss Grau. Like, yeah. You're like, I won't do that. I won't do that. Yeah. yeah no, I definitely feel that. Um, I, I, I'd like to think that I have a catalog of, yeah. of names in my head that I probably won't forget. Right. Um, it's hard to forget because you, you talk to them every day for 180 days. Do you think especially you, with like your field, like there is like that extra investment that you take mm -hmm. in these extra level of care with the students that like Definitely. kind of allows you to form like that connection even further? Oh, they're like my family. Yeah. yeah. I, I like care about them like they're my own like children. Like, right. I feel like I have, you know, X amount of kids right now. It's like the oh. thing, like the thing that we would always hear when we were younger. It's like you spend more time with your teachers than with your family, which is true. You're at yeah, school sometimes. for what, eight? Hours eight hours a day, day. yeah um but yeah i mean I, I know most most learning happens um you know outside of the school day and during the school day but yeah. uh yeah definitely i feel like most of your learning's done um you know those teachers become a pretty big part of your life yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> like even if it's just little anecdotal things you know right. just things that you like take with you and stuff like, like that. you know the, the uh the Freudian slip when you call your your teacher mom or dad right like, right you, yeah right yeah. exactly because mm -hmm. you can kind of do that i don't know I think maybe when I was like very I, I did young, once, yeah. I did one time. Was, I never did it super. I called my fourth grade teacher who was just a, who was a, a boy. I called him mom, <laughs> and I was like, I think it was like only him that heard it, but right. uh, I was like mortified. <laughs> right. Hey, at least at least the mm. one of the most the sidebar one of the most mortifying things that's ever happened to me is in school is uh, this is like very timid. So like I've gotten lucky about not having anything. Do you remember when I was in eleventh grade? And I like cut all my hair off. I always yeah. had long hair, yeah. and then I finally like, cut my hair off. It's funny. You're one of the few people that I like remember the reactions because mm -hmm. I remember I didn't tell any of my friends. Yeah, and we were like walking past each other in the hallway, and you were just like, <laughs> like that was just your reaction. Remember the Aaron O face from um. Yeah, Ghost you basically gave me the the Aaron <laughs> Ghost Adventures face. But I was in homeroom, and there's this kid behind me that was like always late every yeah. day, and my homeroom teacher like made a joke like, "Oh, look who's here!" Yeah, and I thought she was looking at me, being uh, like, "Who's this kid in my yeah. class with this haircut?" And I was like, "Oh yeah," and she was like, "Oh no, so and so's here." But yeah, Kyle, I like your haircut yeah. too. And yeah. I was like, I just wanted to be, go home and be like, "Fuck." <laughs> you know, like, you know the song that's like "I still see your shadow." Oh, yeah. yeah, like I would have just face plant into the bed and blast that. Could have avoided that interaction. Yeah, yeah. and just <laughs> that's one of those things that, like, when you lay in bed, it just haunts you. Yeah, like the three AM thoughts. You're like trying to get to sleep. You're like, but remember that one time in high school when right. I did that one thing? You know, like no, but and the best part is like no one even in homeroom heard it besides those three people. Right. But it's still, it, yep. still just again, <laughs> those those are the moments that stick with you. Yeah. Um. <laughs> no man that's great like I, yeah. I think it's i'm always super proud as like a friend when i can see people that i'm friends with that i've known for so long making like a difference and you're definitely yeah. one Thanks, of those man. people um that Appreciate do that, that. yeah um <laughs> as we wrap up here i just have a couple other things and then as sure. always we have some some incredible segments planned that i'm, <laughs> I'm very, very excited. excited um <laughs> I've been asking people this, like, uh, because I think it's super important to kind of think about. It's something that that I personally struggle with a lot, and and I think getting like insight on people from people helps me kind of learn more about it. Is like, you know, whether it be with the music stuff, your professional career, and stuff like that as well. Like, you know, what kind of defines like a uh, success right like mm. i think that's such like a ambiguous word like you know professionally does that mean how much money you make you know professionally does it mean like you know how many kids that you reach and stuff like that music is that right. how many spotify listeners you have you know but True. i think it mm. kind of is like framed into like what you want out of it kind of mm -hmm. thing and it's something that me and uh, soul fruit uh, my first guest this season we're kind of going over um when you kind of look back and you can like look at like you know that kind of high school era version of you and kind of see where you're at now like do you feel some moniker of success or Def yeah definitely um and I, I, I in saw, those things yeah, yeah i saw yeah. soul fruits uh, podcast i love you man you're awesome um <laughs> he's the man um <laughs> yes. yeah that was I, I was happy that you brought that question up um 
Yeah, it's interesting looking back. I never thought I would be uh, yeah. where I am doing what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, when I was in high school, if like even if you just shared a picture of me right now with my my hair short, I'm sure like, this is you when you're. All 20. right, here's. Yeah. I looked through the catalog and here's a yeah. picture of me and Matt from 2011 on your screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would be like, no way, that's not me. Yeah. That dude's got short hair. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm back to the long hair. Yeah. So. <laughs> Crazy. Um, but yeah, I, d I think I feel pretty successful. Yeah. Um, yeah, just. Doing what I like to do um, right. and doing what I uh, want to do in yeah. my free time, right? And I think that's kind of what I've been learning too. Like, I think it's super easy to get like lost in the sauce, right? And to yes. be like, <laughs> you know, I'm not reaching X, Y, Z metrics, right? That mm -hmm. like, you know, the societal standards, uh, yeah. you know, that we put in front of ourselves. But I think like, you know, also something that I was putting, uh, touching base with our, our last guest poet 22 was like mm -hmm. sometimes like even just putting yourself out there right yeah. like especially people like me and you that are more reserved like putting something out that's just as like hey here's me being creative and stuff like that you yeah. know i think that there's Art. a moniker of success in that and if there is like the success that comes with it as well yeah, then it's fine. A bonus. you know it's yeah. a bonus but mm -hmm. um do you kind of feel that way yeah, I mean, even yeah, you mentioned uh, monikers. Even just coming up with a, a name to go under was right. was a, a big struggle until I think the last month is when I finally clicked. I was like, yeah, I like that. It sounds cool. Yeah. Um. Sometimes you just got to pull that ripcord and be like, I got to stop thinking. This yeah. is it. You know. Yeah. Like I think what you just said the first time you said it at the beginning of this of the session. Uh, that was the first time that I've ever told anybody. Yeah. So hey, we got the exclusive here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is this is a this is happening. This is got to hold me accountable now. Gotta put right. Stuff out. And I think that's super <laughs> important too. Like. You know, even with some of this stuff, like w when I stopped doing the podcast for the first season, I needed to take a break just because there's a lot that goes into it. Sure. But then like taking a break there, you know, then you're not have that accountability. Like I know that I have yeah. to have a new episode in right. two weeks, it's you like, know, and stuff like motivating. Right. So, yeah. um, yeah, I think that like self accountability, you know, not that there's, you shouldn't feel like too much pressure from mm. anyone, you know, but I think that's super important because I like, think in the past I've been the same way and I don't know about you where it's like you get so in your head about like, ah, uh, like, you know, how many, you know, in a band like Spotify listeners do we yeah. have or how like, many people are people at the show, the show, you know, and yeah. stuff like that. And those are definitely things to like be mindful of for right. sure you know that's not the most important thing though right, right? but mm -hmm. you know you and i have both played shows to 10 people yeah. that i'm sure that were fucking awesome yeah you know yeah. like yeah. you know and i've played yeah. shows to 200 people that sucked yeah yeah and <laughs> you know six of the people in the 10 were your family your friends yeah. right yeah. exactly <laughs> or like the other bands that like i felt <laughs> obligated to <laughs> nice stick set. around yeah six set no, yeah. six set dude can i use your cab <laughs> yeah <laughs> get extra quarter and check yeah, yeah. <laughs> can we can we stay at your place tonight <laughs> um yeah but I think that's super important. Yeah. I think it's something that you learn kind of as you get older. Yeah, just got to have fun. Do do what you like. Do right. what you like and like what you do. Exactly. And I think like uh, sometimes when you do throw caution to the wind and kind of don't care, that's when you actually start to put out good stuff and, yeah. and get stuff rolling. You know? Yep, definitely. You know what I think that means then? I think that means that you're we gonna, need to get a you're make me uncomfortable. <laughs> no, we're going to do a diminutive thunderclap <laughs> oh, reunion yes. here on the podcast, right? I'm with it. We're going to do it. Um, we're going to do a tiny bedroom concert of it or whatever we end up All calling right. it. And it's just going to be us playing rock band. We have to play maps by the yeah, yeah. So that was that is, that is, that is one that we played a lot. Um, the best one. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> the best one that we played. I don't know if you remember this. Who played what? In, in the band. I think I was drums, right? You were drums. Okay. I think me and Mike were guitar and bass. bass and then... Kevin was vocals. Yeah. Uh -huh. The best one that we played was Round and Round by Rat. Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> How could Boy, you not, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. We would that do, like, the, solo. the back oh. to back. <laughs> me and Mike would go back to back with it. It was so good. God. So good. I think we need to, like, go to a crowd sale and get everything together and just for all kinds yeah, Sometimes sake. when I go to Goodwill... Um, yeah. I like we'll see the drum set and I'm like, do I need All it? All right, and I'm honestly, like, yeah, we it. might need to <laughs> we might need to get a GoFundMe going to get us. A, it's probably like thirty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> no GoFundMe. Or we'll like, just put it you, together. Can you check your parents' basement? And yeah. Like, if, if, if you have you rock have band material, a rock band yeah. thing, please feel free to hit us up and yeah. we'll buy them from you. Yeah. Um, you know, Definitely. but they don't even have to yeah. be in good quality. They can have mm -hmm. like some soda spilled on it or yep. something. Yep. Like the my, corner ripped off. Mine, yeah. mine, my brother got <laughs> mad and punched the red drum off. Like, and that's that. It's frustrating. Yeah, that's the floor tom. Yeah. That put the kibosh to it. Didn't didn't you have to get like custom kick pedals because oh, we yeah, kept breaking from, them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah, I had to get a, a custom one and like an actual drum yeah, kick pedal at yeah, a point. I had to get someone fix it 
because I kept like slamming it too hard. You get into it. You do. How can you not? Um, <laughs> speaking of getting into things, are you, do you like the segue that oh, I'm about to do? You are like the segue. I master. know. I'm getting good at yeah. them. I hope everyone can see, yeah. you know, my segue growth. Me gassing you over the. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, as always, uh, we have a couple of segments planned. If you'd like to stick around, um, we can we can hop right into them as Let's well. Do it. Um, all right. Well, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, and uh, as you can see, we already have uh, some things ready here for our, our segments. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm very uh, excited to do these uh, with you, especially when it's someone I know very well. It, it, I feel like makes this even better. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna let these sit here for a second before we um we uh, get into this. I have a, a segment that we did with Soul Fruit. You know, now that we have this new setup on the podcast, we have the capability to use a little bit of technology. As you can see with the screens in front of you, and I'm going to show you. Um, do you know the app TikTok? I'm I am very familiar. Are you very that. familiar? I don't have it because right. You remember Vine, right? Yeah. I would spend. I would stay up to like three a.m. Yeah. Well, Vine, so that's kind of where I'm at with TikTok, mm -hmm. and um, it's great and it's terrible all wrapped into one. Yep. And uh, Grace and I have gone through and we've curated some TikToks for you that I just want to get your reactions <laughs> so to. Um, Excellent. The first one that I'm going to show you actually isn't from TikTok, it's from YouTube, but I've been, I've been, you don't understand that. I have been saving this video to show you for probably close to a year. I'm this so excited. video that, <laughs> that I'm going to show you. I am so excited for this uh, to show you. Um, you know the song uh, Down with the Sickness by Disturbed? I think that was one of our. Uh, that was one of our Thunder Thunderclaps. Uh, this is a segment we like to call the good, the bad, and the talked. Um, so, if you'd like to get into it here, I could show you this uh, incredible video that I've uh, been waiting to show you. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Oh, wow. oh, ah! What do you think of it so far? I don't know which one's my favorite. <laughs> I, I want this to go on forever, truly. Uh, well, we've got more. This is a ooh -ah 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 compilation oh of people doing uh, the ooh -ah -ah by uh, Disturbed. <laughs> that was incredible. I like the one that was just like a dark void. Yeah. You just could All you could hear was that. I've had that on a <laughs> saved a playlist on my YouTube and just said good shit for the longest time. I and I was like, if there's ever time to crack this out, it's for uh, it's for Matt I, here on the podcast. I truly feel honored. Of course. I would like to hear yours. Can can you try it? <clears throat> yeah, let, me, let me drink a little bit of yeah. water. Now, you know... First off, what's the right, Grace said, what's the technique? I don't know if there is. <laughs> See, I don't have like the crazy piercings he does. Uh, I think okay. that might have something with it, but I'll do one if, you, if you'd like. All right. Yes. Well, first you got the part that's like, dun, 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 you know, got the build up. Dun, 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 And then it's like, can you feel it? Ooh, ah, ah. I felt like that was pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> is that good? Yeah. I feel like that was pretty good. Can I? Is there a way I could get you to <clears throat> give me one? Of course. Yeah. You want me to do the? Yeah. Can you just hold up? That was pretty good. Wow. Holy crap. Yeah. Oh, great. I think there were some good ones on there. I think there were some not yeah. so good ones on there. Uh, I, hope, I hope this video makes it to the next, um, the next. Conference. Yeah, maybe we'll be on the on the TikTok uh, <laughs> us doing it. Um, you want to see a cat hit? 
first, let me hop out the motherfucking Porsche. I don't want it. <laughs> you want to see that again? Yeah, run it back? All right, I got you. First, let me hop out the motherfucking Porsche. I don't want it. Dude, he actually oh. hits the whip. The can cat you, actually. Again, please? One more time. Hard, I got yeah. you. Okay. Hopefully we don't get DM. First, let me hop out the motherfucking Porsche. I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, he legitimately hits the whip. I don't understand how it's even possible. That was he really so good. Hit it. That was so good. I'm, I'm glad. Oh man. One of my favorite <laughs> things about TikTok is when old people use it. It's the They're, best. It's yeah. the best, right? Yeah. And TikTok, more than Vine or any of the others, I feel like really has a high population of older people that are using it. Yeah. And I've got two gentlemen here that it, you know, that maybe need to get their TikTok privileges taken away. Listen, listen punk. Look out for me. I got my punk. I'm not the hell out of you. You're, I kill you. I kill you. I kill you, Manny. I think. You, what do you think about that guy? I would absolutely not mess with that guy. You wouldn't mess with him. I yeah, that guy. You would, see that technique. That's what I'm saying. Love. He would straight hit you with that fade real quick. The jacket. The jacket too. Let's let's real quick take another. Like let's <laughs> this right here. Like let's yeah. just take a look at this frame right here. It's like the winter digital camera. He's got the digital camera. <laughs> He's got like a hundred headshots. He's unlocked yeah. it. The uh, this is what I think. Really Listen, is. punk. Look out for me. I got my. Punk. He puts the glove on, you know. Mm -hmm. He puts the glove on, and you know, at that point when he starts doing the flurry, like you're done. You're, you're done for. Yeah, you're done. So, that's kind of the dark side of mm -hmm. older people using TikTok. Here's like more of like the light side. Somebody I love this. Well, maybe just one more cup of coffee. <laughs> I said that two pots ago. <laughs> I drink it all the time. It's like I got a monkey on my back. <laughs> monkey. <laughs> I love that guy so much. That was like wholesome, like older, older individual um, he, using TikTok. I love that guy. He he has a ton of TikToks of him just doing that high energy mm -hmm. and like, whatever that snapping noise is. Yeah. And some of them are pretty outlandish and he has some crazy stuff. His yeah. name's Colorado Baby. Is that the name uh, of it? He lives in Colorado. He loves it. And, you know, that's all I kind of aspire to mm -hmm. be, you know. That's very wholesome. Very that's, wholesome. Like I could see... You know, most yeah. of my my Facebook feed. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like, haha, relatable, relatable yeah. content. Yeah. Right. Uh, I love that guy. Let's let's maybe give it one more run. Back. Well, maybe just one more cup of coffee. <laughs> I said that two pots ago. <laughs> it's already had two I drink pots it all the time. It's like I got a monkey on my back. <laughs> two pots. Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> the him spilling it at the end there really just I think puts it it's over chaotic. The edge. But like, it is. what is it like the on the, the quad, right? Yeah, the on chaotic the, neutral. Neutral. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, like, like chaotic wholesome. Yeah, we, chaotic, I like to add like a yeah. That's like a side a, top genre. Yeah, yeah, chaotic wholesome. Mm -hmm. I have something that's just wholesome. Period. Here at the end with these TikToks, I always like to do a palate cleanser. You know, just Excellent. something that's a little more peaceful here at the end. Now, th this cat that I'm about to show you, um, I love it. It eats treats a very special way. It like crunches them. Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know, something about that yeah. is just very wholesome to me. Hey, cats are interesting creatures. They are. I wish I wasn't like deathly allergic of them. Our cats aren't getting yes. to you too bad, are they? Mm, no, no, I'm okay. good. Yeah. We, we vacuumed and stuff. Uh, <laughs> Thank before, you. Appreciate so. the accommodation. Did you like that? Did you like the TikTok creation? I love that. Could I request to see one edition? One yeah, one we could see another one again. Could I please see the, the cat hitting the whip? The cat again? hitting the whip? Yeah. Absolutely. First, let me hop out the motherfucking Porsche. I don't want it. He straight up hits a whip. Yeah. Like, no doubt about it. Like, that is a full-blown whip. That cat knew exactly what it was doing. Yeah, everything about <laughs> it. That's that's one of the coolest cats there are. Well, I'm glad that you enjoyed yeah. that, uh, those curations. I feel honored that those were the choices that you have curated for Absolutely. me. Absolutely. <laughs> I did. I, you can ask Grace. I literally spent time this past weekend yeah. straight up 
calculating you know yeah. when to get some you know i wanted to get you know sometimes you people you can get with the low brow like mm-hmm. super memed out but i had to get yeah. some good ones for you you know so i'm glad that you like that if you'd like we could take the the headphones off for the next part if you'd like no audio needed um i'm glad that you uh that you enjoyed that though <laughs> i loved it our next segment this is something a little bit new you know we always like to do some food or drink as always um I'm very passionate about food me too. And I think the best way to get to know one, like I always say, is to peer into like their uh, how they interact with food and drink. You know, mm-hmm. that's something that I feel like you can really get with people. So we have three different items here. We don't have a name for this segment yet. I'm sure by the time you see this, there'll be a lovely graphic made by Grace that names the segment. But to break it down for you, we have three different things. I don't know the flavors of these things. You mm-hmm. don't know the flavors of these. These were taken by this Grace. Like chocolate. And right. So there's, you know, so we're going to start it. easy. Uh, is the chocolate, the medium is going to be like this drink, and then hard will okay. be the hard, you know, the difficulty scale. Um, okay. and we can just see if we can uh, tell, you know, if we can tell what the flavors are. Um, Grace, you know what they are as well. And I think behind us, we haven't seen is the packaging. If we wanted to grab that mm-hmm. and show the camera, is that correct? Well, if you're ready to get into it, let's start with the chocolate. All right. Hit you with a little uh, cheers, cheers as always for that camera. Here you go. It's pretty easy. I feel like I know what it is. Mm-hmm. I'll let you give the first guess if you'd like. I'm going to say definitely dark chocolate. Definitely dark like chocolate. In the upper, upper, maybe like 70% dark yeah. chocolate. Yeah. Getting some, some sea salt and maybe, maybe an almond. Dark yeah, chocolate. Yeah. That, that was my guess. Hey, classic dark chocolate with almonds. You mm-hmm. got to, um, you got to yeah, do that. So good. Oh, the thing's down here. Can you grab that uh, wrapper for me? Do I, can I look or no? Yeah. Uh, well, don't look at the other ones. It should just be a uh, piece of paper. Uh, this is for accountability. I'm not looking. Okay. Ta-da! Oh, there's more of it. Ooh. <laughs> so we can uh, have more. It's a uh, dairy and gluten free. Seventy. Wait, seventy percent. Stop. He's on it. He knows. Yeah. I, I almonds like, and sea salt. I have like a chocolate problem. It's like actually, it's actually bad. <laughs> he literally got it to a T. Yeah. So there's the, yeah. the packaging. My students, okay. my students have known that I've I eat like peanut M and M's for breakfast like yeah. once a week. <laughs> Love peanut M and M's. I recently been eating the peanut butter M and M's. Okay. As well, I like, but I like the peanut M mm-hmm. and M's. Yeah. All right, so we're one for one. Okay. So far, uh, this is the medium, right? This kind of. All right. Before drinking it, I would say it's definitely some kind of ice. Coffee, like coffee or something, yeah. yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Interesting. It kind of almost tastes like nothing, mm-hmm. but it's definitely something. I'm thinking either like like chai or cinnamon, or, maybe, or it's, maybe both. I was thinking like some kind of cinnamon pumpkin. Chai, I feel like usually it's stronger, but I'm getting that chai. Maybe yeah. it's because it's iced down. Okay. I think I'm getting some of that chai. Make another one. Yeah. Let's get another, let's get another one. one. There's definitely some cinnamon or something in it. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if it's. I think it might be chai as well. Yeah. Is it like coffee or do you think it's like a a chai a chai drink? Maybe it's one of those like. See, I'm so bad with this. Like the Bolt House Farms thing. Mm. If that was copyrighted, you can bleep that out. Okay. Okay. Sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> they, they, or they can sponsor us. Is it? Okay. I'll, I'll take a guess. Is it some kind of coffee chai? Chai. Is it coffee based? No. No, no coffee. Tea. Chai is tea. Excellent. Black tea. Black tea. Is it? Is it like a with cream or something? Or is that what chai is? It, is? Cream. is it like a? I'm gonna regret. No, I'm not gonna say it. I'll say it. Is it a type of nut milk? Okay. Oh. It's not a nut. Okay. Oh, is it oat coconut milk? Coconut milk? Oh. Oat milk, yeah. It's a, a chai oat milk latte. Chai oat milk latte. Do you can. know which? It's the can. All right. Uh, I think it's on my side. All right. I'm not looking for accountability. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, I like their packaging. Yeah, I'll show this camera. It's minor figures chai spice uh, tea with oat milk. Be, are we able to see that over there? 
Um, very good. 158 okay. calories for one can. Hmm. That's like look pretty, at that cool guy right there. Person, yeah, pretty yeah. trendy here on the on. front. The slip ones. He looks like he's about to tell you that Tame Impala is actually just one person. <laughs> yeah, Tame. Yeah. Like a meme. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I know what the kids Let's are. See, yeah. Let's see that. Let's see what we got here. Zero grams of added sugar. That's Love to see that, that always. That's that's awesome. You know when um with it. when um would drink again when uh Grufton was on here he he was going hard um on the nutrition facts so I I can appreciate that as well yeah. he's one of the uh few people that uh really took the time to check out the to break it down to break it down yeah Grufton and he kind of schooled me on some of the stuff I was like Good dude. how much of your daily allotted sugar does it have and he right. was like zero because there you shouldn't have yeah, any true yeah yeah. <laughs> Um, I think you know sugar is a uh, carbohydrates are all sugar. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yep. So you I didn't pay attention it's, it's, in it's the health class. You gotta look out for I see. The so natural ones. sugar is existing always. Yeah, like, um, like like fruit and stuff. You know that has that's got yeah. sugar in it. But True. It can still like spike your your blood sugar and all that. But gotcha. I would drink this again. Interesting. I'm not a huge chai person. Yeah. I, went, got, I think Jesse got me into a pretty. Pretty gotcha. big chai phase when I was in high school. All right, now this is hard. Like you said, oh. this is the hardest one. You think? Mm. Okay, from first inspection, before we drink it, it looks like some kind of berry yeah. or fruit. It looks like kind of pulpy almost. It's like Do you exact, see that? Yeah, it's like the exact color of the um my bloody Valentine album yeah, cover. Yeah, like the Loveless yeah. album cover. Yeah. Um, there's some specks in there. You see that? Yeah. Are we allowed yeah. To, oh, sorry. Yeah. Are we allowed to smell it first? Yeah. Let's. Smell. Got some type of like, like Kool Aid, like maybe yeah. like limeade, dragon fruity kind of. Ooh, that'd be on brand. That nice. would be on brand, try. right? All right, let's go. Let's go for it. Ooh, it's like kind of carbonated, maybe. Yeah, I did not expect the carbonation. Yeah. I like it. Wait, you Grace screwed me. <laughs> I'm supposed to not be drinking any soda or carbonation right now. Oh. It's not soda. Okay, I'm sorry, know. I was kind of aggressive. <laughs> I'm two. <laughs> I've gone two weeks without drinking any soda. Oh, congrats! Except last night, I had a cherry lime made from Sonic, but that was like my. That was listen. You, hey, no, hold on. You, that was me. You know, I got two weeks, and then I'm going to go another two weeks, and I'll have another cherry no, you, lime. It's you. If you cut things out, it's not sustainable. Right. Like, it's if, weaning it. Yeah. Out, like right? you know, like people that are really into like exercising and you know nutrition, they'll have like cheat days. Yeah. Like if you don't, if you don't let yourself like have that stuff, you're gonna like. Right. You're just gonna quit whatever you're on and just. Eat well, that's kind of how I thought about it. I could feel like me, the tr me starting to run off the trails a little bit because, like, yeah. you know, I don't drink alcohol or anything like that. The one vice that I have is I drink soda. Like growing sure. up, I was allowed to have like one soda a day, and I was like, "This is like messing up my stomach," and I'm drinking my calories. Right. Like, let's just get rid of this. Like, yeah. you know, people use it to like put on car batteries and stuff like that. Like, we probably shouldn't be drinking it. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. But anyways, all right. Well, I didn't get duped. Any? This anyways, is good. Any? Any flavor? Profiles? I don't know. Um, it's super ambiguous. Yeah, I like it. I'm, I'm I like with it. it yeah. Like, I'd... and then there's like stuff in it, like some kind of pulpy, mm -hmm. and that's kind of throwing me for a loop as well. Is it like one of those mix-ins? Like, is it just like a right instead of like a portable drink? Is it like a like one of those crystal light things? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna take my guess. Can I? Is it some kind of like dragon fruit soda? No. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> it's big red X on my face. For that. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna guess it. No, well, I want to give Matt can at least to, an attempt. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Is it a drink or is it like a? Is it like a? a it's a. It's, a, it's not a dust. A <laughs> dust. <laughs> like it all came in one. You're saying? Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's carbonated and it's. Oh, one more. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's so ambiguous. It's like hard to tell what it is. It's got to have some type of like tropical fruit in it. Right. That's like, what I was thinking. Either pineapple or mango. Like, I, I don't know. I, I can't think of like a brand or anything even. Um, give, us a, give us a hint. Yeah. No, <laughs> you don't even know. Yeah. Should we just grab the bottle? I think it's a type of tea. Type of tea? Uh, what? Yeah, I'm out. I don't uh, know. Yeah, all right. I think it's a type of yeah. tea. There were like teas around it. Huh. 
It is yuzu red shisho shis, shiso, right? An apple. Apple. Yeah. That kind of makes sense now. It's like, you, you know when you... Uh... And it's sparkling. Oh, okay. That's the carbonation or bubbliness. Gotcha. There's, there's teas in that brand next to it. If anyone you know, wants to see the uh, packaging. Oh, there yeah, you go. Like Grace that. is going to focus like, on it. You know when you are looking at song li- like misheard song lyrics? Yeah. Once like, you get it, you're like, that's yeah, what that... Like, oh, yeah, I could hear them saying that. Yeah. Now I totally get the apple. Yep. Like the acidic of like the apple. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, because when, when I was saying like uh, one of the tropical fruits, it was the, definitely the acidity. Yeah. I knew it was something fruity. This is 100... Oh, wait, you're right though. Look, there's a dragon fruit on there. Okay, Isn't hey, I think so. Top? Something. Hairs? Mm. I don't know. Ooh. Ingredients are carbonated water, organic cane sugar, 100% yuzu juice, apple juice, con- apple juice concentrate, red shiso juice concentrate, natural flavors, fruit and vegetable juice for color and citric acid. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder what yuzu is. Yeah, I don't know what yuzu, yuzu is. Juice is. It says it contains 7% juice. Huh. Interesting. It could huh. just be the picture, too. Yeah, well, that as well, yeah. Where'd you get this at? Uh, street street. It's called Streets Market right there mm. on, on St. Paul. Um, They've got some good stuff. We've been getting some of our, you know, just to not get big brands, you know, and also support local business. Got so, too. Okay, I wouldn't, have, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Well, I'd say we were... What one think, one and a half out of three? I would say we kind of had the the chai. Yeah, you know, not bad. This one, I'm gonna take another drink because it's so good. But yeah. this one threw me for a complete loop. Mm-hmm. Oh well, I enjoyed these. Yeah, yeah. No, these are good. I the chocolate. I'm definitely gonna definitely gonna get on this. Yeah, right, gonna... <laughs> yuzu is a fruit. Hmm. Yeah, but it's not commonly eaten raw. Hmm, it's not commonly eaten raw. Hmm. Interesting. Chocolate's really good. Mm-hmm. Got some more of it here. Well, as we unwind here, um, sorry, let me put that can down. If you've seen any of the past episodes, there's um one segment that we always do here at the end. Um, and it's called uh, Tweet the Rock. Mm-hmm. Um, we always like with our guests here to send a tweet to the Rock. We can get a picture together mm-hmm. after this that we can attach the tweet to send to the Rock. So, um, Matt, Joey Legs, if there's anything that you could tweet to the Rock, what would it be? The Rock, I would like to know if I could teach you how to do a kickflip. Wow. Yeah, that's if right. You, we, if you can't do it already. We can't what well, right. Well that's the thing I was gonna say. He's very capable of a lot of things. So. I feel like he can kinda do anything. Right. But if he can't, I would I wanna teach him how to do this. Let's do it. Right, my thing is like what board do you give him? What's like the highest? Like a... <laughs> oh my gosh. You could give him like a like a a nine. <laughs> I feel like you just gotta put like some trucks <laughs> on like a surfboard. Yeah. Or something like that. Get him a long board. <laughs> And that would be like a normal skateboard. Dude. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Imagine the rock on like a penny board. You'd probably have like half a foot on it. Yeah, a couple toes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think that would be sick. I think that there is a chance that he's so athletically gifted that mm-hmm. it might t- not take him long. But I definitely think there's some techniques that you could show him. Yeah. What's the thing that's like the barracks where they drive around like yell, like do a kickflip? Isn't uh, that like a thing, right? Yeah, it's or... a thing that people do, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, what if like someone did it and the rock was there and could do it and just busted it right there? I I would love that. I would love it. I think mm-hmm. by sending this tweet, hopefully we can connect you to <laughs> start getting the. Yeah. I mean, by the end of the day, the rock might be like you know about to join do tour yeah. or something. You uh-huh. know. Like, yeah. I think it's just the fact that he's never stepped on a skateboard. It's not whether he can do it. True. It's I feel like nothing. once he gets on it, he'll have them all. You think so? He won't be able to do anything. You think, like, if they come out with another new, like, a uh, Tony Hawk game? Like, I like um, Skate 4. Yeah, Skate 4, yeah. unlockable player, The Rock. <laughs> the Rock. Yeah. <laughs> do you be... remember, um, this kind of like that. Do you remember, like, the Dave Mira BMX games when we were younger? Yep. The one you could play as the Slim Jim guy? Do you remember that? <laughs> Classic. 
Yeah. But you could play like you just unlock different versions of the rock. Right. Like the rock in all of his movies. Right, exactly. And that's just the whole roster is the <laughs> is the rock. And you can use templates and make uh, your own versions of the rock. Dwayne the Rock Johnson Pro Skater one. Isn't isn't Skate Four coming out? I think so. But it might not be too late to get a right. unlockable character. Right. Some DLC or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I think <laughs> the rock DLC. The rock DLC. <laughs> isn't there like another game called like Session or something like that? That's um, kind of like it. it. Yeah, what is it called? It's called. There's like two because I know Jimmy was playing. Our friend Jimmy was playing one. I forget. My friends are going to think I'm a loser for not knowing <laughs> it. Um, yeah, I, can't I can't think remember. of it right yeah. now. But there's they're like skate. Oh, skate XL. Skate XL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skater XL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want that skate four. Such a mm-hmm. great game. I know skate three was like my existence for yeah when it was raining. Yeah, yeah. what a great game. I think the Rock. Yeah, I think he may. Hopefully, yeah. take you up on that. Hit me up. Hit him up. Hey, mm-hmm. reply to the tweet. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you've seen a great picture of us holding this picture together that uh, should entice you in, into doing that. I hope so. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been great uh, having Always. you on here. Uh, yeah. Before we let you go, uh, and we'll have it on the screen as well. If mm-hmm. there's any social medias or sites you want people to follow you on where they can keep up, uh, sure. whether it's SoundCloud, Instagram, et cetera, uh, let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, sure. Since we're. Uh... This is the launch of my of my moniker. We'll yeah. do uh at Jelly Legs MD. And that will be my Instagram handle. So let's go. Give me a follow. Keep up. Uh, hold me accountable for putting music out and hit me up to collab. Hundred percent. I definitely think. Um, I want to see you and Soul Fruit collab on something. Man, our messages to each other are like, we need to meet to make a <laughs> we need to make a song now. Have you seen? <laughs> I want you to see like his uh like setup that he has downstairs it's, it's great. been a while since i've seen it it's great he has like mm-hmm. this tv mounted to the wall that he puts ableton on that, and stuff like that and he's literally like in, in, he's incredible he's, so yeah he's yeah. killing it um always gonna show love for soul fruit mm-hmm. here on the podcast um as well as everybody else that joins um mm-hmm. it's been great having you on it's been great Thanks even just me. uh you know, podcast and everything aside to sit down and, and chat with you we've yeah. known each other for so long i'm trying to think I think the first time we met each other was in like was it eighth grade maybe seventh eighth grade seventh, we yeah. were like twelve or thirteen that's oh seven right so right it's... fifteen years dang crazy mm-hmm. couple ogs yeah sitting here <laughs> right next to each other here but uh, yeah no that's like I said this last season with the podcast it's great to meet new people and it's also great to um talk to people that I haven't talked to in a bit yeah. so especially when everyone's so busy it gives us a reason to to get together definitely yeah <laughs> so, man. All right. Well, um, we'll definitely have you back on. I'm sure this is not the last time we'll see you on the oh, podcast yeah. or other stuff that we do, and uh, yeah. we'll we'll see you around. Let's do it. Appreciate everyone for watching, yep. and we'll uh, we'll talk to you uh, in this closing right here. All right. Love that guy. Honestly, one of one of my favorite people in the world. He's great. Just, great guy. Just one of those people that when you're around, like it just brings nothing but positive energy oh, and, I, yeah. and I mean definitely, that. it's hard to be to be mad when you're hanging out with Matt. Yeah. So, um, he has an aura. He does, and he's just you know he he you get what you see if that makes sense mm-hmm. you know with him and uh, just like I said I like we said I've known him since I was like twelve or thirteen and he's been the same guy I mean obviously growing you know grow since then and stuff like that uh, but he's you know just always been mad he's great people love to complain like I love to complain don't get me wrong but like people in general like I feel like as humans like we love to complain just like you know be negative about things but like I don't think I've ever seen him with a bad attitude no I mean he definitely <laughs> can be like this sucks and like, stuff like that yeah. but you know he always tries to have like a positive spin on super things, yeah you know? and I think for me I'm a little bit of a pessimist it's easy to get kind of in that hole and he's like oh man have you you know well it could be this way you know and I'm like he's right you know so yeah. uh, I think we definitely need more of people like Matt. And he's the perfect example of someone that should be working in education, in my opinion. Yes, And that's definitely. great to hear him talk about that. He's, you know, when you hear about, you know, good people and being in education and teachers that you remember, kind of like he was talking about, I think he exemplifies that. And to work in middle school and to be a middle school yeah. teacher for special education is extremely um admirable yeah Yeah. admirable yeah i mean i could not do it myself so i really commend him on that yeah um definitely check out like he said he's got some stuff coming up uh uh he's releasing as well as this other band modern nomad who's constantly releasing things um 
I'll definitely check all those out. Um, we got some food on the way right now. Are you uh, are you ready for that? Yeah, yeah. I'm very ready. I'm ready for that. I'm as starving. Well. <laughs> too. Um, all right. Well, uh, as always, you can find all of us on Instagram at 100 Miles Media. You can find me on Instagram at WoolXGod. You can find me on Twitter at WoolXGod. And find me streaming on Twitch here and there at twitch.tv slash WoolGod. Just WoolGod. I think that's it. I don't follow me on MySpace, question mark. No, you don't have MySpace. Uh, where I can wish. they find you? Oh, me? Uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Gracie on you. Uh, on what? <laughs> on Twitter and Instagram, but I don't really use Twitter that much, so mo- mainly Instagram. Mainly Instagram. You start yep. using Twitter more. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we're excited to bring you guys more shows. I hope everyone's been enjoying um, the podcast so far. Uh, definitely leave any kind of comments, feedback in the uh, comments. Um Go ahead and uh, like and subscribe to the video as well. That's the best way, especially if you're watching on YouTube. The best way to support us is to either follow us on Instagram and subscribe on YouTube. Um, If you're watching on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, the best way to support us is to... I'm sorry, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, the best way to support us is to rate the podcast. Uh, I would say give it five stars, but honestly, give it what you think it deserves. I'm interested to know. Um, I mean, I think it deserves five stars, right? I think so. I think four point seven five. Well, you know, it yeah, could, it could it's be not better. perfect. The curtains tr- are messed up. We try. Sometimes. We yeah. try. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the best way to support us. And like I said, we have some super fun things coming up this spring. Um, so we can't wait to bring that to you. Um, hope everyone stays happy, stays healthy, stays safe uh, during these crazy times, and uh, we'll be uh, right here in two weeks to do this all over again. All right, thank you. Should we give him a double piece? Double piece? We can do a double piece fade out. Ready? One, two, three. Lately these jobs got me struggling less But I'm still under pressure And I've still been depressed There's no limit to extra If it makes you the best Flying low with the winners Cause take the air out my chest I ain't tripping so long Maybe it's for the better Cut the alcohol and the smoke There's no limit to extra Ain't as far as it goes A long way from your regular Degla A Make it rain on your umbrella Ella A Rain down 